Today I'm driving something very dear to my heart because it's so similar to the best car I've ever owned before I had to get rid of it, get something with four doors. It was a blue six-speed manual BMW 335xi coupe and it was a blast to drive. Well, this isn't the 335i, but this is the new M235i from BMW. It's blue, it has a six-speed manual transmission and I can't wait to drive it. With BMW's new naming structure, all even number series are now reserved for coupes and odd numbers are for sedans, meaning the previous one series has now been replaced by the two series. Not only has the name changed, but the entire car has been reworked. The car is now three inches longer and the wheelbase has been stretched by an inch. One thing that I wasn't a huge fan of on the previous one series was the high canopy profile. The roof line just looked too tall in proportion to the rest of the car. The 2 Series, in my opinion, looks so much better. The M235i isn't really a true M car, but more like an M light. Essentially, it's a 235i with an M Sport package, which gives you more power, bigger brakes, different suspension, plus a lot of little M bits tossed around. I, for one, like this approach. As much as I like the true M cars, I find them a little bit raw for everyday driving and are better suited as a second vehicle or on the track. I wouldn't mind seeing them try this approach with the other models, giving the consumer something a little bit more performance oriented, but not having to go all out as the M does. Well, the interior of the M235i is beautiful, it's simple, it's functional, just like my previous BMW, except a little bit more updated. Instead of an inset screen, they have this kind of uh, uh, pop-up looking screen. It doesn't pop up or down, but it kind of has that look. A lot of manufacturers are going for that kind of tablet type of look right now. I love the steering wheel. It reminds me of the new Z4, which has that type of uh, Z4, Z8 inspired look. You have M badging on the steering wheel, on the gear selector and of course on the door sill as well. BMW makes great sport seats and this M does not disappoint either. One thing that's new for the M and newer BMWs is their iDrive knob now. You can actually enter things in by writing on top of the iDrive knob which makes it a lot easier for entering addresses or phone numbers or things like that. The back seat isn't huge, but it's more than adequate for four people in here for shorter trips. Now here's a little complaint that I have here though. It seems like BMW kind of forgot something and what I mean is on the door handle here, here's the door handle. When you open the door, you have this one handle which is way forward, close to the hinge of the door. Okay, so when it's far extended, here, it's hard to reach, but the thing is, is that you're so close to the hinge, you don't have any leverage. There should be a cutout here, which my old BMW had, and my even my current BMW has as well. And I don't know why. It's almost like they just forgot to put the handle here. The base model 2 Series comes with a two liter, four cylinder turbocharged engine putting out 241 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque. Now the M235i has an inline six-cylinder with a twin scroll turbo and it puts out 322 horsepower and 332 pound-feet of torque. Now there is no more 235i or, or the old one was a 135i. Basically if you go for the six-cylinder you automatically go for the M package here. Now my old 335 had a version of this award-winning engine that this car has, except it had less power at 300 horsepower and 300 pound-feet of torque. Except I had the Dynan Stage 2 added on to it, which basically reprograms your computer, uh, giving it a lot more power and torque. So it was rated at 384 horsepower and 424 pound-feet of torque. But this M235i is still no slouch at all. So what do you get with the M package? Well, first of all, you get more power. You get 22 more horsepower 
than the standard 300 horsepower from the inline six cylinder engine. You also get the M adaptive suspension. There's a drive select button here next to the gear shifter and I can choose all the way from Eco Plus to get the best fuel economy or actually go to Comfort, Sport or Sport Plus. Now once you select Sport even, it goes and stiffens up the dampeners on the suspension giving you a much sportier ride. Another thing you get with the M is you get variable sport steering. So this is basically the same or a version of what BMW used to call active steering. So it changes the ratio of your steering. So when you're going slower or parking, you don't have to turn your steering wheel as much or even performance driving. If you need to input a large amount, you don't have to do it as much with this steering. If you've never experienced it before, it does take a little getting used to. I know the first couple days, my turn-ins on my corners were a little bit too early because when you turned, it really turned. It's very, very reactive and very responsive. If you choose not to get the manual six-speed and go with the auto, which is a sequential automatic gearbox with paddle shifters, on the M package, you also get launch control. Well, launch control is exactly what it sounds like when you're sitting at a light or if you're on the drag strip or the racetrack, you can activate launch control and it will jettison you out of the hole. The two series would make an excellent everyday driver, a good commuter car even, believe it or not, and even this M version that we have here. Most of the time, M versions or sport versions of cars are usually a little bit rough around the edges. They're all about performance and they're not as refined as they could be, but this one is, it's extremely smooth. I could drive this in the city, especially with the 332 pound-feet of torque. We're going uh, 60 kilometers an hour right now. I'm in fourth gear with this type of torque. I don't even have to change gears at all. The size, it's not too big, it's not too small. It's still very, very nimble to get in and out of traffic. This car has a nice growl to it, but it's not too obnoxious. You know, some cars, they sound great, especially sports cars, uh, when you get into them for the first 10, 15 minutes. But, you know, try that day after day after day or going on a long road trip. It gets a little tiresome. Call me old. Old. The M235i starts at about $45,000 and it goes all the way up to about 55 or 60,000, depends how you want to equip it. But for about 55,000, you'd have a very, very well equipped M235. Now that's also the starting price for a BMW 435i. Uh, now that's a little bit bigger of a vehicle, but you're actually getting a lot more for your money with this M2 series. For the same price, you're getting 22 more horsepower, more torque. You're also getting the M brakes, the M adaptive suspension, the variable sport steering, the backup camera with sensors, navigation. Like I said, you get a lot for your money. Well, BMW has done a great job on this M235i. They've put together the ultimate package, in my opinion. You've got the great styling. It's, I think it's so much better looking than the previous version, the One Series Coupe. The interior, it's a little bit more updated. It's simple, yet functional, like all BMWs. And of course, the handling and power. 322 horsepower from something this size. It's a blast to drive. Maybe you're shopping around for a 4 Series, and you really like that inline-six turbo, but it's just a little bit too much money. Well, this could be the car for you.